tell us your story. When did you first notice that something wasn't quite um, right? It was actually in, probably back in 2012, I, a trip to the dentist. Um, came away with, you saying, you've got a lump in your neck. He noticed the lump, you hadn't he noticed. noticed the lump. I hadn't noticed the lump. It, I was having some treatment and it was a case of he was saying, I want you to literally go immediately to your GP. And having been then referred to um, the hospital to actually investigate further, I had a biopsy on my neck and um, they removed twin tumours. The diagnosis um, was actually confirmed once we knew what we were looking at because the biopsy was obviously very important to actually grade, find out exactly what this, this was, was going to be. And the type of cancer was follicular lymphoma and I'm told it was at an advanced stage. So that was sort of um, quite mind-blowing at the time. I remember sitting in uh, a consulting room being told um, it was a sort of a good news, bad news scenario really. It was sort of, well, yes, it's, um, it's treatable, we can do something about it. Um, Mm, it's not curable, so mm, it's getting a bit bad news, really. Um, and there's possibly a, a 12 year sort of survival rate. You know, I've got tumours that are growing, and you know, we need to do something about them. And it was at this point that I was, you know, I had the chance to join a clinical trial, and I joined the Gallium trial in uh, 2012 um, in Southampton. What did it involve? So I had six months traditional um, chemotherapy alongside the immunotherapy at the same time so probably spent five or six hours in a day ward um, receiving both drugs through through intravenous um, drip. I'm always very struck by the way people respond to the idea of being part of a trial when, when they've got a diagnosis of cancer because as Julia says it's just you get information coming at you from from all directions and the idea that you would be able to step back, take a breath and go, yeah, but I want something good to come out of this, even if it doesn't help me. I still find absolutely breathtaking from the people that we look after. I think I, I, I put myself to bed quite a lot and sort of slept and, and thought, right, how do you get better? Sleep, mend your body. Um, at the end of the six months, um, I think I remember sitting in one of the clinics and saying, I was asked that very question, how do you feel? I think I've just run a marathon. In fact, I think I've just run several marathons. When did you get the first inkling that things were going well? From day one, I just felt that there was a positive response. And I actually remember sitting saying to the research nurse, I can feel something munching away in my neck. I think it's working. And we weren't measuring the success of this in months. We were starting to measure the success of this in weeks. Well, tell, tell us what happened. Um, basically, you know, I, I, I had the drug, I, I had um, time with these, all these fantastic people who, who, who looked after me. Yes, you, you don't feel well, that's going to be a cancer patient and, you know, it, it's not the nicest thing to be doing. But, it, but in the end, you know, you, you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, this is making a difference. Um, I'm getting better. And I think at one point I felt I'd written myself off to a certain extent that is this going to work and it's going through your mind. But over the six month period um, what actually happened was every time I went in the tumours were getting smaller and smaller and smaller and we started at probably about 10 centimetres and by the end of the six months we were talking about 0.5 and two weeks ago I actually sat in Professor Johnson's office having just had a scan and I actually came out with a platinum star because I've actually got no active lymphoma. So the scan has actually said, this has actually done its business, it's worked. It's, it's given me a chance, it's given me my life back.